Daar is een groot hoeveelheid skatte onder die seese oppervlakte opgesluit. Dis een wereld wat altijd aan die beweeg is, wat voortdurend verander, een nummer eindigende bron van leven. In die dieptes van hierdie wilde, geheimsinnige, wonderskone en ingewikkelde koninkryk flikker een verskuilde staart, begeleid dier die glinsterende son en die eb en vloei van die getuie. Die kustlijn van zuidelijke Afrika vorm die thuiste vir van die planeet sy mees uiteenlopende en oorvloedigste seelewe. Een specie wat destijds in hierdie rijk waters floreer het, is so erg ontgin, dat het nou op die rankie van commerciële uitsterwing is. Dit is die story van Zuid-Afrika se witgoud. Um, this is the South African abalone. You get many different species, and ours is quite unique. It's the only one with these wavy lines on the shell. Um, all the other ones from around the world, they don't have these particular wavy lines. The color of the shell is determined by what abalone eat. So in, in the Western Cape, the shell is generally white on the top, and in the Eastern Cape, they're eating mainly red seaweeds, and they get this whiny red colored shell, um, which is quite beautiful. thing about abalone is they they're such a unique animal there's there's nothing quite like it a study van die skulp onthul dat dit uit la proteïne en kalsiet bestaan hierdie la is so sterk dat die molekulêre struktuur daarvan as basis vir die ontwerp van supermateriale en rekenaar skyfies gebruik is they pretty bulletproof they once they sitting on a rock with that strong muscle and that hard shell um, that's why they sit out in the open, they, they're pretty much immune to any predator, except humans. A man can easily find an internet search an idea of the state of South Africa's Perlemoen population. Hierdie geharde klein weekdierkies sy beroemdheid is vervang dier hulle bedreigings sy beruchtheid. Perlemoen is aanvankelijk oorbevis, maar nadat die toelaatbare vangst tot 48 duikers beperk is, was het vir baie jare een stabiele visbedrijf. Die quota was 650 ton. Dit was eerst in die mid 90er jare wat die situasie in 'n katastrofe ontaard het. The the street price for abalone really escalated in in the early 1990s. Uh, the South African rand depreciated against the dollar. Demand rose in China with rising incomes, which is where abalone is considered a delicacy. And South Africa's borders opened up after apartheid and and the country re-entered the world economy. So this stimulated a gold rush for abalone. And then combined with that was the fishing rights restitution. So coastal communities saying, well, we deserve fishing rights and we don't think these quotas that have been given out are credible. So people just said, well, we're going to do protest fishing, we're going to fish for ourselves. But it was really driven by this large amount of money. And then very rapidly organized crime came into the picture. So initially people were just fishing for themselves and then soon gangs came in and Chinese syndicates providing the marketing channel to Asia. Die wit goud word uit Suid-Afrika na buurlande soos Lesotho, Swaziland of Namibië geneem en dan deur Chinese syndikate na Hong Kong uitgevoer. When the Chinese entertain important guests to honor the guests, they will buy abalone and South African abalone is regarded as the best abalone in the world. Uh, so the abalone from China sells for about half the price of South African abalone. In 1990 was a kilogram South African perlemoen maar 27 rand waard. Vandaag is a kilogram meer as 400 rand waard. Abalone poaching happens at unsustainable levels. We all know that the resource has been reduced to a fraction of its former abundance. 
And the situation now is that any formal quotas are going to be so small compared to what people are taking on the regular. So if the Aberdeen fishery is going to be resuscitated, it's going to need people to have long-term rights and, and access to a resource that's available to them in some kind of attractive quantity. Uh, the resource as it stands right now doesn't seem to be available in that sort of quantities. Journalist Kiman de Greef is goed bekend met die ondergrondse wereld van perlemoenstroperij en verstaan ook die vissersgemeenskap van Hangberg en Houtpaai. Hangberg is a place that's been actively marginalized economically and socially since before apartheid. Uh, there's very few job opportunities, people are largely poor, the unemployment is very high. And despite the fact that there's been ongoing and quite genuine attempts to reform the state fishery sector to include more people of colour in quota allocations. It's been quite a flawed process and it hasn't happened nearly as quickly as many people would have hoped. So there's a lot of frustration um, and poaching is, a, is an extremely viable alternative way to, to earn a living from the sea. Kimon verduidelik dat a typische duik operatie in die nacht plaasvind. Manne word dier a boot afgelaai wat dan wegvaar aangezien die boot die waardevolste besitting is wat die klein stroper spannetje besit. Hulle word bewapen met a flits op plekke soos by Robin Eiland in die seebamboes afgelaai om hulle sakke onder water te vul. Hulle neem cellfone saam wat in kondome toegedraai is om hulle water dicht te maak. Sodra hulle sending afgehandel is, stuur hulle SMS of geer die spanlede op die boot een gemiste oproep om hulle te kom haal. Dit is dan vir hulle dringend om so gauw as moendlik na die oever terug te keer en soms word hulle achterna gesit. Maar om die stroopers skuldig te bevind, moet overhede hulle op jeterdaad met perlemoen betrap. So wanneer stroopers die gevaar loop om gevang te word, gooi hulle eenvoudig die vangs oorboord. En houtbaai is daar geheime aflaaiplekke waar hulle die perlemoen achterlaat. Draars uit die gemeenskap, soms selfs kinders, vat die perlemoen of na een plek waar het gestoor word, of na koopers, waar het in verskye prijse van die duikers koop. En those buyers then pass the product on to, to operators from larger syndicates who take the Abilene to drying facilities and eventually export it. It's a whole long branching and quite complex chain happens from Hot Bay onwards, my research was really just focused on the community. Hundreds of people were actively involved in drawing an income and some of them were putting that income to good use, building houses, sending their kids to school, putting food on the table. Of course, Abalone poaching has also had a range of negative consequences which are reported on quite often in the media. I'm cautious sometimes to, to just speak to those, to those consequences because it's, I find it's quite easy to, to condemn Abalone poaching and, and its social ills, which it no doubt has but without taking it a step further to understand where it is that it comes from and, and what would be needed to stop it. A potential solution to the poaching problem is, is abalone ranching. The idea om perlemoen op a plaas te laat groei en dit dan weer in die see vry te laat is a relatief nieuwe concept in Zuid-Afrika. Die doelwit is om die wilde perlemoenbevolkings weer aan te vul en om volhoubare, langtermijn oeste vir die gemeenskappe of maatskapie wat in die holbron beleed te verseker. Die omgeving rondom Port Elisabeth loop al vir meer as een dekade onder verwoede stroperij deur. Nou, met die belovende voordele van perlemoenboerderij, het die regering op experimentele basis aan maatskapie wat begin het om die uitgeputte ribbe met gekweekte perlemoen te vervang, recht te besorg. There were a fleet of poacher boats, these super ducks with 400 horsepower engines on the back, operating full time and they were taking between 1000 and 2000 tons of abalone a year which is worth between 500 million and a billion rands. So in other words, this fishery was bigger than the squid fishery and they were poaching unopposed on the sea. They weren't being arrested. They were going to Bird Island in the marine protected area. You would see 10 or 12 boats there a day. And the situation was completely out of control. Om die probleem met stroperij in die Port Elisabeth omgeving aan bande te lei en die aangevulde rive te beskerm, moes maatskapie noodgedonge privaat sekuriteitsmaatskapie wat uit voormalige militaire personeel bestaan, sy hulp inroep.
When the Tactical Task Force first arrived in Port Elizabeth in 2013, we noticed 12 major groups. Since then, we've managed to chip away at those groups and we are currently left with four groups um, that are extremely active but very elusive. Our patrols are 24 hours a day, seven days a week and all up and down where we believe that they are working. Unfortunately, we can't be everywhere all the time. Volgens Tom weet die taak mag nooit wat om te verwag wanneer hulle met stropers te doen kry nie. So hulle moet ten alle tye waakzaam wees. Toe hulle aanvankelijk met sendings begin het, het stroperij meestal doodluiters helder oordag tydens lage tye plaasgevind. Duikers sou skaamteloos in die openbaar in die see gaan oes. Nadat die publiek echter die stropers begin rapporteer het, het hulle hul modus operandi verander om in die aande ongeacht die getuie te stroop. Nou vat hulle wanneer ook al moendlik wat hulle ook al kan, selfs al is dit drie uur in die ochend. To completely stop abalone poaching in the Port Elizabeth area is impossible. It is impossible. Because where there is a gap, somebody's going to take it. What you can, however, do is curb it dramatically. I believe if the Metro, if DAF, if SAP and whoever else is interested in abalone poaching had to pool our resources, I think 80 to 90% of it could be stopped before it starts. Na een afname in stroperij kan Rive wat vroeger oorontgin was echter nou met veiligheid met plaasgeteelde perlemoen aangevul word. In die Hamburg gemeenskap in die Oostkaap het nog een boerderij maatskapie begin om die moendlikheid vir een perlemoen boerderij vernootskap met die plaaslike gemeenskap te onderzoek. It's been declared as a presidential operation Pakisa project. So the the presidency's got a drive to build the ocean economy and this has caught their imagination and so we're hoping uh, through our engagement with the Hamburg community to work out some sort of a partnership between the community which would then own the fishing rights and the abalone farm which would then supply the seed abalone and then do the processing and marketing. Nomonde in Langisa is a navorser van Rhodes Universiteit. There are various projects running in Hamburg at the moment. There's a cob farm and there's an oyster project. But unemployment is still quite high here. And so a ranching project that is successfully run and managed has huge potential to improve the livelihoods of more people in Hamburg. I've found that all the stakeholders, so community, industry, as well as governments, are keen to participate in a co-management strategy. And so that is where a lot of the potential lies. The community here sees potential for their development and for the improvement of their lives. And, and they want to be part of pioneering a way to make that happen. Sifamishi hapa loon, ubana nga haba sinu kufunda, sifundi so, sifundi sani. Tatiza kwa lekleyo kufundi sana. Siza azazi ndi ndo bana haingeze tu ezba si pila kwelkaesha. Sifuna zonga izi ndo ezi koyo, ezi koyo, ezi sinu ngileyo. Zibe kuna kwekaesha lisi zukulwana because we don't know uba lipela, lao pela nini nilizwe. But eyo na ndi bala lekleyo ndo kubana Masinga ngabi plengas, masinga chonge apa pambuetu, mas chonge fa apa siya koyo, kukuti apa siya koyo. We as now tata zonge ndo ez koyo loa ndi siskrepe kubasa siti mapileti na bandwa koyo ngoku. Abandwa na betu, abandwa na babandwa na betu, bau chapi. So kuyo yong ndo senza ayo, na ilo ndo sifuna ndo kubana yenze ke ndo yobana kufanyi iswe ya balona. Njongo zetu ndo bana kunga pili kwa kanyiku who could benefit it in a benefit in a school and a school and a school and a school. So who precies word per le moon gekweek? Om die antwoord op hierdie vraag te kry, moet ons met die kus langs rai om een wilde kus per le moon plaas te besoek.
we're the only abalone farm in the Eastern Cape. Um, all the other abalone farms are based in the Western Cape traditionally because that's where the biggest supply of natural food is, the kelp. We don't have any of that in the Eastern Cape. So in our business model, we had to include producing the seaweed to grow the abalone, to feed the abalone as well. Uh, we currently produce about 50 tonne of wet seaweed every month and we feed it all to the abalone. But we also utilize that, you know, we take our abalone effluent water through the seaweed, which, you know, that cleans that up. So it's got an environmental benefit to us as well. Per le moon laat eenmaal een jaar in die lengte, wanneer die toestande net reg is, een massa eiers en sperm in die water vry. Om een gereelde voorraad per le moon te voorzien, boots broeierijbestuurder Melke Meijer heel jaar lang lengte toestande na. Zodra die eiers en sperm vrijgelaat is, broei die bevruchte eiers als larves uit. Hulle word dan in speciale tanks hervestig, waar hulle in miniatuur per le moon ontwikkel. Hulle vreet microalge wat in die laboratorium gekweek is. Die perlemboen word dan in nieuwe tanks oorgeplaas, waar hulle vir nog 6 jaar lang seewier gevoer word, totdat hulle volgroeid is. Meeste perlemboen wat op die plaas gekweek is, word na die verre ooste uitgevoer. Die maatskapie Wild Coast Abalone het hulle echter daaraan verbind om elke jaar 1 miljoen perlemoen vir aanvulling in die natuur te voorzien. Perlemoen word in polystyreen bokse met ijspakke verpak om hulle koel te hou wanneer hulle van die plaas af vervoer word. Hulle word na Port Elisabeth aangerei en op een boot oor geplaas wat hulle na die ribbe vervoer, waar hulle levens as wilde perlemoen uiteindelik kan begin. Perlemoen boerderij los dalk nie Suid-Afrika's stroperskrisis op nie, maar dit hou beslis groot potentiaal vir verandering in, vir beide die samenleving en ons oceaan ekostelsels. Muziek 